Hi guys, this is Alex, and in this video I wanted to talk about a medical example of the way that I use mnemonics, memory techniques for um, learning different things. And in this video I wanted to talk about tetracyclines, which is a class of antibiotics. And so we're going to be, you know, focusing on this information right up here at the top of the screen. This is uh, essentially a screenshot of the kind of high yield points about tetracyclines taken out of the review book first aid which is a um, step one exam review book that almost all med students use um, so these are kind of the high points about tetracyclines that you definitely should know as a med student and i just want to go through you know the different images uh, and things that i created to remember this information hopefully that can give you a sense of you know the, the process that i actually use to um, you know put memory techniques into practice as, as learning tools so, um, yeah, let's, let's just dive in. What I wanted to talk about initially was the palace and the loci that I'm using. So I've, ta I've talked a little bit about my strategy in the past um, and written about it on, on the website, but essentially what it is is, you know, when I reach a new block of information, say, you know, antibiotics as, you know, part of the pharmacology course, um, I will go into my palace's uh, brainstorming sheet, which just has, you know, a bunch of, uh, possible options for palaces that I could use um, and I'll choose something. So in, in this case I, ch I chose uh, my elementary school, so a place called OUS in Oxford, Mississippi. Uh, so that's you know the place that I'm going to use to store all the information I want to remember about uh, antibiotics. And so you know I've been moving through antibiotics and then finally got up to this point where, which is tetracyclines and so at, at that point I found myself in uh, essentially the foyer uh, of one of the main buildings of OUS. So that's why you'll see foyer here in my, in my description of my mnemonics. And down here, I'm, I'm, I've written out uh, the images that I wanna use to remember this information. And I'll put the locations um, into brackets. So foyer meaning the general area where I'm gonna store tetracyclines. And then, you know, women, women's door here, that's a, an example of the first locus that I'm gonna use. So yeah, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. So uh, there are three types of tetracyclines, tetracycline, doxycycline, and minocycline. Uh, you know, occasionally I will make images for specific drugs, um, but in this case I didn't because I happen to be pretty familiar with uh, these drugs. I used to have worse acne than I have right now, and so I actually took doxycycline and minocycline. So I know the names of those two drugs well, and tetracycline is obviously, you know, the, 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 the name of the class as a whole. So it's not too hard for me to remember, didn't make any images. Uh, moving on to the mechanism. The uh, the mechanism I actually encoded in a prior place in the palace because uh, first aid presents sort of general mechanisms of different antibiotics uh, and how they act in the bacterial cell. So if we move over to that place, let me find it here. There it is. Okay, so you know this is the um, actual page in first aid, and then if we move back a little bit, this is a general. Uh, a, a description, uh, sorry, a diagram um, of generally how antibiotics work, and you can see tetracyclines down here. So you'll notice that they act on the 30S component of the bacterial ribosome. So the ribosome meaning, you know, the, the little organelle that bacterial cells use to make proteins. So that's obviously a huge, hugely important thing for bacteria. Um, tetracyclines act on the 30S component of that ribosome. And to get a little more specific, which actually comes up in a later diagram right here, um, you can see it right there, they, they act on the 30S part of the ribosome to inhibit the binding of what's called amino acyl tRNA. And so, you know, that will, again, it's just a way of stopping the ribosome from doing its normal job. So that's the, that's the specific mechanism of tetracyclines. And I, I encoded that earlier, um, you know, when I was in my palace around around the time of this. So now that we're later on um, in the palace at, at the general information about tetracyclines, you know, I'm not gonna re-encode that information. I've already have it stored previously. And so I won't really talk about that right now. We'll just keep going. So um, let's see here, let's go back to this one. And so, yeah, okay, we've talked about the general mechanism. It's bacteriostatic, meaning that basically it doesn't kill the bacteria, but it, it, it prevents it from replicating or essentially slows its growth. Um, so it has limited CNS penetration. So, y you know, that's, that's something that's not a really intuitive fact. You can't look at the mechanism of the drug knowing that it inhibits the 30S part of the ribosome and really have a good sense of why that would limit its CNS penetration. So that's the kind of thing that 
is ripe for memory techniques. You know, it's something that's not very intuitive. So I'm going to go ahead and encode that. And that's going to, it's, it looks, you know, a little like it's further down here in the description, but this is um, the piece here. So to describe the, uh, the area in my palace that I'm actually using, you know, if you walk in the front door, I'm, I'm going to ask you to just sort of imagine this for yourself. I'm not going to show you any images. Uh, hopefully that's still clear. And I'm walking in the main door of the, of the school building. There's a foyer area on the, there's, a, there's essentially a wall in front of me. On the left is the door to the women's bathroom. On the right is the door to the men's bathroom. And there's a, um, a water fountain, uh, you know, an elementary school water fountain sitting right in the middle of those two. So that's going to be essentially everything that I use to encode this information. Um, so I'm going to start over near the left side, which is generally uh, the convention that I use. And inside of the women's bathroom, <laughs> a place that I have never been, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and imagine uh, Ron Swanson kind of huddled up in there by himself. And so Ron Swanson is the image I use when I talk about uh, CNS, the central nervous system. Um, I won't really just, it's kind of a personal connection. I won't really describe, describe it too much, um, but just, you know, know that this guy right here, Ron Swanson, uh, he's my image for CNS. And so I imagine him in there by himself. The drugs can't get in there to him um, and that, you know, they can't really act on uh, the central nervous system. And so, you know, they don't really talk about it here, but uh, an implication of that is that, you know, for somebody who um, has... Uh, who, who's essentially been bitten by a tick and has Lyme disease, once that Lyme disease progresses to the point where it gets into the central nervous system, you don't want to use something like doxycycline anymore. You want to move to something like uh, ceftriaxone or something like that. So that's, you know, an implication of that piece of information. So we've got Ron Swanson hiding in there. That's our first locus. Uh, and then moving forward here, we've got uh, doxycycline is fecally eliminated and can be used in patients with renal failure. Okay, so, you know, that's a specific thing about doxycycline. Again, not very intuitive at all. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encode it. And, and that is going to be this little description right here. So at the door to the women's room, so not inside, but at the door, I'm going to imagine Dax Shepard. So that would be this guy. <laughs> um, and he's just, you know, an actor I'm familiar with. Like, obviously, you know, if you don't know this person, you would not use this uh, as your image. Um, I'm going to imagine him sort of squatting right outside the door and taking a dump right there. So Dax Shepard for doxycycline, Dax doxycycline, um, and it's fecally eliminated, so that's why he's taking the dump. Uh, and then it should be pretty clear um, that you can use it in patients with renal failure because, you know, if it's being fecally eliminated, eliminated in the stool, it doesn't really need to go through the kidney. So, you know, you don't rely on the uh, functionality of the kidney. So that's, the, you know, our second locus there. So moving forward a little bit, again, another important thing about, doxy, about um, tetracyclines is that you shouldn't take them with milk or any kind of divalent um, uh, cation. So, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with that because when I was taking these drugs for acne, I, I was encouraged to stay away from any kind of milk or cheese um, around the time that I was taking the drug. But, you know, so, so, you know, I might not necessarily need to encode that because of my personal connection, but, you know, let's just say I did. Um, and, I, and I actually happen to do it here. Um, so the, you know, third locus moving a little bit to the right is the water fountain. And I'm going to imagine that instead of water coming out of it, it's just a, a milk fountain, essentially. Um, and I'm going to kind of just use milk to generally capture divalent anions, so calcium and then antacids, which are mainly calcium and magnesium, or iron-containing preparations. Um, and, you know, if, if I wanted to let's say, be more specific about it, I could just imagine that the water fountain itself was made out of iron to, you know, kind of encode that if I wanted to get that extra level of specificity. Um, so, you know, we've got three loci so far inside with Ron Swanson. At the door, uh, we've got Dax Shepard taking a dump. And then at the water fountain, we've got this milk fountain. You know, so moving forward here, um, again, I'm just choosing these loci as I'm learning this information. So, but I, but what I did do was choose the, you know, choose the foyer as my general area to to store the tetracycline information. Okay, and take a quick break here. Okay, so now that we've gone through the uh, mechanism and some key points about the way that the drugs are administered, let's get into the clinical use uh, right down here. So you know, I had mentioned that you can use it for Lyme disease. Um, and so that's right. That's what this is right here, Borrelia burgdorferi. 
um, is the, uh, the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. So, you know, and then this one is mycoplasma pneumoniae, um, another bacterium. So these are two things that tetracyclines are used for. Um, and so I'm going to move on to the guy's bathroom door. So, you know, we had the, the girl's bathroom door. Now we'll do the guy's. And I'm going to imagine that Robin Hood, so we're again at this little description right here, Robin Hood is shooting an arrow towards the door and there's a goalie, so like a hockey goalie uh, with a goal set up standing at the door and then he actually tries to block the arrow with his mitt. Um, so uh, the reason for that is because um, Robin Hood is my image for Lyme disease and this goalie, this hockey goalie is my image for mycoplasma. And so the, again, the connection there is a little bit personal um, and I won't describe it because it'll just be a little too, it won't be, there really won't be a point to it. Um, but that's, you know, two images encoding Borrelia and mycoplasma. Um, so moving forward, um, it also is used to treat rickettsia and chlamydia. Um, and I'm going to move into the boys' bathroom, so a place that I know pretty well. Uh, and there's a urinal. If you move in and move, you know, directly to the left, there's a urinal. And inside that urinal, I'm going to imagine um, that the bottom is just filled with a clay court, so like a tennis, you know, an orange clay court. Uh, and on top of that clay court inside the urinal is an acne covered clam. Um, and so that, you know, that represents the clam for chlamydia, the acne for acne right here. And the clay court, again, a kind of a personal connection, won't describe it, uh, stands for rickettsia. Um, well, actually it's, it's relatively easy. Rickettsia sounds like racket. Um, and so the tennis court, um, being the image for rickettsia. Um, and so, you know, one thing to point out is that even though these, these different things, you know, the, the Lyme disease, the mycoplasma, the rickettsia, the chlamydia, those are all part of the clinical use. I split them, you'll notice, into two loci because I generally try to keep the number of images in each locus relatively low, usually three or less uh, if, I can, if I can do it. Um, just because if it gets too complicated, it becomes harder to remember. That's, that's my experience anyway. Um, so, so there we go. We've got, you know, those two loci with Robin Hood and the hockey goalie, and then the urinal with the tennis court and the clam with the acne. So, you know, that's, that's our clinical uses right there. And then we'll move on to the next piece of information, which is toxicity. Um, so toxicity, um, we'll start looking at right here. Uh, and again, you know, most of these toxicities aren't, and a lot of this information really, which is part, which is part of the reason I picked this one, um, is not very intuitive. So, you know, it's, it's kind of the, the perfect thing for memory techniques because it doesn't really follow um, conceptually from, let's say, the mechanism of the class of drugs. So toxicity is GI distress, um, discoloration of teeth, inhibition of bone growth, or discoloration of teeth and inhibition of bone growth in children, photosensitivity, and then it's a teratogen, so you obviously don't want to give it to pregnant women. So let's start, you know, breaking that down. Uh, if we move over to the right side of the men's bathroom in the sink, um, I'm going to imagine um, the medical professor that I had to, that taught us our GI block. So just imagine some sort of, you know, kind of wizened medical professor. Um, and in that sink right there, he is drowning a baby. So it's kind of a graphic image, a little scary, but, you know, that's part of the reason why memory techniques work. He's drowning this baby in the sink and there's a flash of light and that kind of knocks him back and, and stops him from drowning this baby. So that inc incorporates, you know, GI distress, um, the fact that it's a teratogen and the photosensitivity of tetracyclines. So there's three things right there. And then if I move from there to a stall that's farther down in the bathroom, I'm going to imagine that the toilet is a very yellow covered toilet. Um, and that's to, uh, encode the fact that there's discoloration of teeth and inhibition of bone growth in children. Um, and so we're almost there. There's a couple of other things that I ended up learning further down the line that I went back to this place where I store tetracyclines to uh, add additional mnemonics to help me remember things. So for instance, you know, one of the things that expired tetracyclines can do in addition to causing discoloration of teeth uh, in children is it can cause something called Fanconi syndrome uh, which basically is, uh, it basically blocks, you know, the reabsorption of different electrolytes, glucose, amino acids in the proximal tubule of the kidney. So you end up excreting a lot of things that you should be reabsorbing. Um, so that's something that expired tetracyclines can cause. And so, you know, I went back and you'll see down here um, at the toilet, I imagine that it's, it's still the yellow toilet, 
but now we've got um, uh, an image for Fanconi, which I ended up using Falcone from, from the Batman movies, this guy right here. And I imagine Falcone sitting on that toilet um, and that, that incorporates the Fanconi syndrome information. So um, let's see, there's one last little bit of information um, which is the mechanism of resistance. And again, you know, this is something that, you know, in certain cases, the mechanism of resistance will be very um, complementary to the mechanism of the drug. Um, so, you know, for instance, with macrolides, um, macrolides work by blocking the, you know, this, this specific part, 23S part of the 50S part of the bacterial ribosome. And so you can imagine that the, the resistance uh, to those drugs is conferred by having a mutated 23S uh, segment of the ribosome. So that makes sense, but in this case, it's not so obvious. So, um, you know, it, basically the way that bacteria will develop resistance to tetracyclines is by decreasing the uptake or increasing the efflux, uh, you can see right here, uh, of, of the drug. And so it's plasmid encoded transport pumps. So essentially the, the simple way that I thought to remember that, you know, kind of somewhat complicated piece of information is just to imagine the, the door to that stall where we got Fanconi um, just flying open. So, you know, imagining that things are being effluxed out of the stall. And so that encodes that information right there. So, you know, that kind of, all of these images encode the basic uh, non-intuitive things that I wanted to remember about tetracyclines based on this little section from first aid. So we've got, let's see here if we can count them through. So, you know, let's see how many different loci. So we've got Ron in the women's bathroom. We've got Dax um, just outside taking a dump. We've got the milk uh, at the water fountain. We've got Robin Hood shooting the arrow at the goalie. We've got the urinal with the with the clam and the acne. And we've got the sink with, um, with the GI professor and the baby and the light. And then we've got the door to the stall and then the toilet itself. So we, we actually have eight um, loci in this foyer area that I've, um, you know, roped off, so to speak, for tetracyclines. So uh, hopefully that gives you a sense of how the process works. So, you know, I, I created these this, this um, description, which I keep on all of my Anki cards uh, for tetracyclines. So, you know, the way that I'll, you know, review this information in the future is I'll have these different Anki cards that quiz me on these different facts uh, and I'll just go through them just like this, right? Um, so what is the mechanism, you know, the mechanism of action? And then I won't really go through these, but it's just quizzing me on the same information. So, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a pretty good sense of, you know, these images that I created, how I actually go about um, using uh, memory techniques to, to learn some information, specifically pharmacology here with these, with this antibiotic class. Um, and that'll be it for this video. Okay.